The great zips projections are out pre-spring training. Might be interested to see where the Twins land. We'll dive into those who Zips thinks the best player will be on the Twins, bounce back candidates, and more on today's episode of Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to the Lockdown Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Wednesday, February 8th, and I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. Thank you for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Lockdown. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown today to get started. Again, this is Nash Walker. Three seasons, four off seasons hosting a daily show on the Twins. We're at three days a week right now until next week. Been writing about the Twins at TwinsDaily.com for four seasons and four off seasons and zips has come out with their pre-spring training projected standings for those who don't know zips is a projection system fan graphs dan zimborski they take player percentiles player projections and turn it into a team projection for the season and i almost every day throughout 2022 if you look up fan graphs playoff odds through the season you can see where they project each team and whether they think they're going to make the playoffs, what's their odds to make the playoffs. And I was checking that a ton. I've checked that a ton over the last three years and I will again this year. So here are their standings and I'm going to break this down today and I'm going to look deeper into these projections and why they might be what they are. If you're not watching on YouTube, Zips projects the Guardians to win the American League Central with a final record of 83 and 79. They project the Twins to finish second with 80 wins, 82 losses, Chicago White Sox 74 and 88, Detroit Tigers 71 and 91, and the Kansas City Royals 70 and 92. So the Twins playoff chances are 39% per zips. Cleveland 57 and a half percent. Twins odds of winning the division 30.3%. So much like last year, Zips doesn't think the Twins have a great chance to make the playoffs outside of the division. That's true for the entire American League Central, and that was the case last year. That's been the case for a lot of years, even with the expanded playoff field coming in last year. It became apparent in September that whoever doesn't win the Central is going to have trouble making the playoff field, and Cleveland ended up winning over 90 games, so they would have gotten in, but they won the division handily because it was the American League Central. If you win 90-plus games in the Central and you don't win the division, it's a weird year. Zip sees it the same way in 2023. 80 wins for the Twins as a projection. They won 78 last year. We have a more balanced schedule this season. I believe interdivision foes will, will face each other 12 times rather than 19. I think that's the change. And it's a big change. It's a big change. I think sometimes overstated because, yes, you're going to lose games against Kansas City and Detroit off your schedule, but you're also going to gain games against Pittsburgh and Cincinnati and teams that you wouldn't otherwise play in the National League. I think the American League is is deeper this year, but I think it's closer now. Diamondbacks look like they're they're ready to start winning in the West, and the Central, Milwaukee still has their co-aces and Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff. The Cubs made a bunch of moves. They think they can get back into this thing. So it's more balanced now, but I think last year the American League was much deeper. You can almost pick the playoff teams in the National League in some ways. Although I think the the barrel, bottom of the barrel National League will win more games than last year. You can almost pick the playoff field, like the seven playoff teams in the National League. It's crazy. Not so much in the American League. And for the Twins and their Zips projections, I, I want to I wanna break down today why these are more tepid. Like 80 wins is probably not going to get you into the playoffs. It's a losing record. You're not going to make a wild card with 80 wins. You're not going to win the Central with 80 wins. So Zips projects, essentially, the Twins not going to make the playoffs for the third year in a row. I think when you look at it overall, and we're going to look on the offensive side and the pitching side with their individual projections. Zips has trouble mostly, I think, with the top of the rotation. And we know that's been a problem for how long. We know it's a problem going into 2023. The Twins don't have a clear ace, a clear number one. And then the other issue, and something I highlighted on Monday's episode, they're not crazy about the Twins' young players. Trevor Larnick, Alex Kirilov, they really like Royce Lewis. They really like Jose Miranda. We'll get to those two. But Larnick, Kirilov, 
you know, they, they like Louis Varland a decent amount. They're not crazy about the twins, young group stepping up and providing a bunch of value, namely Larnick and Kirilov, because I think that's a big hope this year. What do you get from Larnick and Kirilov? Zips doesn't think the twins are going to get a whole lot from those two. Offensively, it projects as a good lineup. We know that. And on the pitching side, it projects to be a, t- a deep rotation, but just missing juice at the top. Before the Twins re-signed Carlos Correa, Dan Zimborski wrote, even without Correa, this is a pretty solid offense. With Correa coming back, it's a well above average offense going into 2023, but that was before they traded Luis Arai. So, you know, the the expectations for the offense, I think, should be high. It, it should be a strength this year, but you wonder, taking away Arai, how are they going to make up for it? And Zips, based on their, their player projections, has trouble seeing Kirilov, Larnick, and others picking up that slack at Julian offensively for Luis Arise, losing Luis Arise. And on the pitching side, a little bit more tapping on Pablo Lopez than they were hip on Luis Arise, at least in the, the preseason Zips look. Who does, who does Zips think the, the Twins' best player is? Who are they down on? Who do they think their best defender is, best pitcher, best reliever? All of that coming up. I think it tells us more about the 80-win projection and then my thoughts whether I think the Twins will win more than 80 games after this word. From FanDuel Sportsbook, it is Super Bowl weekend, and we're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Lockdown because they're the number one sportsbook in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. If you like the Chiefs plus money, you can go bet it at FanDuel and you get that great offer. So head on over FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Thank you for making Locked On Twins your first listen every day. Your second listen after the show should be with Lindsey Crosby, MLB Prospects. He's a prospect encyclopedia going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Zips projects the Twins' best player in 2023 to be Carlos Correa. 139 games, 24 home runs, 79 runs driven in. A weighted runs created plus at 137. League average is 100 and nearly six wins above replacement. 5.9 Fangraphs wins above replacement for Carlos Correa. Projects as the Twins' best player by a decent margin. That's well known, I think, that the Twins were, were going to lose their best, if not a co-best player in free agency and they got him back. And that's huge. We know that about this team. That's huge. Zips is not so hot on Alex Kirilov. 0.9 wins above replacement projected for Alex Kirilov. That's lower than I think the hope is for, for twins fans this year. I think the hope is Kirilov finally gets his wrist figured out. He hits in the middle of the order. He's your primary first baseman starts against righties and lefties and he has a breakout season. That's the hope. Zips is not so hip on Alex Kirilov. It's also worth mentioning that it takes the last three years into account. It takes your career up to that point into account, and Alex Kirilov really has no track record in the majors. On the plus side of that, that's the reason his projection is so low. There's a reason his projection is so low, though, because he has no track record in the majors. We can get caught up in prospect pedigree at times we can get caught up in first round picks well he was a first round pick well he was a top 15 prospect yes i i do this as well that does not guarantee a thing especially in baseball and i think sometimes a football mind can can leak into baseball if you're the 15th overall pick in the nfl much higher hit rate than the 15th overall pick in major league baseball alex kirloff coming out of high school in pittsburgh was highly regarded as a great hitter and was phenomenal in the minors in 2018. So he performed. If your base, though, is he was a first-round pick and he's a former top 25 prospect in baseball, maybe that doesn't carry as much weight. And for Zips, it doesn't really carry much weight. And that's evidenced by less than one win above replacement in 2023. I'm bullish on Kirloff if he's healthy. 
if is a big word for Alex Kirilov and, and the reports have not been great that his wrist is sore not not great reports and zips is is not so hot on him either they project the twins best defender this is interesting to me best defender to be christian Vasquez. 14 defensive wins above replacement in his zips projection christian Vasquez could be an underrated under the radar addition for any team this offseason and i think we're really going to see it with the twins if he's healthy and he plays like he can behind the plate offensively bounces back from a really rough stretch in with houston I think he's going to go down as one of the better value signings of the offseason, and he can kind of transform things for the Twins behind the plate, calling games, giving Ryan Jeffers more starts against lefties and a higher percentage of his starts against lefties. Vasquez projects as the Twins' best defender on a team that has Correa and Buxton and Michael A. Taylor. Says a lot about Vasquez and, and how he performs defensively and how he has performed defensively to this point in his career. Highest OPS projection is Byron Buxton at 867 OPS on base plus slugging. Byron Buxton projects to slug with the best of them. 867 OPS for Byron. Bounce back candidate, Joey Gallo. This is going to be the duality this year. This is what I think potentially could happen. The Joey Gallo signing touted as this could go really, really well, or it could go really, really poorly. And I think in some ways that's true. Most likely it's somewhere in the middle. <laughs> and that's that's most likely for anybody. Most likely, you know, 50th percentile outcome for Joey Gallo. This is this is about that. 119 way to runs created plus 19% better than league average at creating runs and nearly three three wins above replacement. However, a sub 200 batting average. If Joey Gallo performs to this line, sub 200 batting average, 119 way to runs created plus, basically three wins above replacement, 2.9 wins above replacement, which factors in defense, and he's 19% better than league average at creating runs. Objectively, that's that's a good signing. That was a good year. Like you got what you were hoping out of Joey Gallo. He was well above average at creating runs. He was obviously good defensively if he was worth almost three wins above replacement. But I don't think the perception will be that because he will be a sub 200 hitter and he's going to strike out a ton. It's going to be hard for Joey Gallo this year to get Twins fans on board, I think, because even a, a good year for Joey Gallo, he's going to have a low batting average. He's going to strike out a lot. But if this is what happens, that's absolutely a bounce back. And that's absolutely a great outcome in free agency to get a 119 way to runs credit plus and nearly three wins above replacement. Twins would take that, I think, all day long, and Zips is projecting that for Joey Gallo. I like that. Prospects on the offensive side. Royce Lewis, 2.3 wins above replacement in 84 games. Coming back, and Zips just loves Royce Lewis. Chunk of that is how well he performed at AAA, how well he performed in a very short MLB stint. The talent's there, we know that. And if he came back and played in 84 games, and he was worth over two wins above replacement, you'd be really excited about him going into 2024. There would be a ton of excitement, like well above average hitter, well above average player for 84 games. Be pumped about Royce Lewis going into 2024. And then Ed Julian, 2.1 wins above replacement and a way to run credit plus at 106, so above average. That would be a nice outcome for Ed Julian this year. I, I've said it over and over. You're going to see him this year. Ed Julian is going to play for the Twins absolutely destroyed right-handed pitching last year and i think he's going to produce against right-handed pitching in the majors at a high level he's going to draw walks he's going to hit for power and zips likes him 2.1 wins above replacement he's going to be a factor this year potentially a jose miranda type of impact if, they, if it goes really well in his rookie season a jose miranda type of impact on the roster on the pitching side much less rosy i think overall the sense you get, and, and this is the feeling that I think fans have as well, is defensively the team looks like they're going to be great in the outfield. Up the middle with Correa and Vasquez, I think it's going to be a good defensive team overall. And the lineup should be dynamic. They should score runs. They should hit for good power. It's it's more of a dynamic group offensively. On the pitching side, yes, it's deeper. Zips agrees they're missing a frontline starter. They're missing a number one starter. And they think the best pitcher on the Twins this year is going to be Joe Ryan. And it's easy to forget about Joe Ryan. because the Twins acquired Pablo Lopez. They have Sonny Gray. They have Tyler Malley. Kenta Maeda is coming back. Joe Ryan is still in the rotation. And Zips thinks he's going to be the most valuable Twins pitcher in 2023. 
391 ERA projection, two and a half wins above replacement. To put it into perspective, Shane Bieber in Cleveland is projected for 3.9 wins above replacement, and Dylan Cease for the White Sox, 3.6. So well below those two further illustrates the Twins missing that sort of guy in their rotation. Not so hot projection on Kenta Maeda, 424 ERA and 0.9 wins above replacement. I struggle with Kenta this year. I I love watching him pitch, and I love the way he pitches. I like the acquisition at the time. It worked out really well for the Twins in the shortened season. Got hurt in 2021, and he's, he's older now. I think he's 36, and he's coming back from Tommy John surgery. Question marks all over the board. I can see multiple outcomes here. I can see him coming back and and being effective and a a valuable pitcher for the Twins in 2023. I could see him never really getting back, like going back on the injured list, struggling to stay healthy. Velo's not there. I could see that. And then something in between would be like this, a 424 ERA, fine fourth or fifth starter, swing starter who can go five innings and get pulled. That's That's a middle outcome for Kenta Maeda, I think, in 2023. It's not so hot as a projection. I uh, over at zips best reliever Joe Duran, 323 ERA 0.7 wins above replacement. It was not a mirage last year for Joe Duran. I think he's awesome. I think he's going to be awesome again in 2023 and zips agrees to a, uh, to a certain point. They're not crazy about Joe Duran. I think his minor league track record certainly plays into that as well because he was a starter and not a great starter in the minors. He was okay. He it never matched up to his stuff. Like, why is he not? Why is, are his numbers not better as a starter? But as a reliever, he looks uh, he looks incredible. Lowest starter ERA. So they project Joe Ryan to be the most valuable. He's going to throw the most innings. That's the projection. But lowest ERA is Tyler Malley at three seventy eight. I, I would not be surprised if Tyler Malley is the team's ERA leader. If Pablo Lopez is the team's ERA leader, if Sonny Gray is the team's ERA leader, if Joe Ryan is the team's ERA leader, if Bailey Ober is the team's ERA leader, none of those outcomes would surprise me. A minimum 100, 120 innings, I think, for the rotation. They project Tyler Malley to have the lowest ERA in that rotation. At the time of the trade, I thought Malley coming over to Minnesota would benefit from getting out of Great American Ballpark. Those narratives haven't changed. The one thing that has is you worry about his shoulder. You worry about his shoulder this year and how he's going to hold up over a full season. He did not in 2022. Bounce back. Not really anybody. They love Cody Stashak. Zips just loves Cody Stashak. He elected free agency. I didn't see anything beyond that. I don't think he's in the organization anymore. Coming off shoulder surgery, big time shoulder surgery. Zips just loves him though. I, I couldn't find any other bounce backs because honestly, the Twins' worst pitchers last year, I would argue, you know, Emilio Pagan, they don't like Dylan Bundy, Chris Archer. They're not on the team. No bounce back candidates, really, among Zip's projections uh, for the Twins rotation. It's just, it's okay. Okay projections on the pitching side. And prospects, Louis Varlin, they have for the fifth highest wins above replacement among all pitchers. Fifth highest for the Twins, which I love that because I think it's it's going to be true. I think he's going to be a top five to seven most valuable pitcher on the entire staff. That includes relievers for the Twins in 2023. And then Simeon Woods Richardson projects for more wins above replacement, almost more, like 0.1 less than Kenta Maeda and Josh Winder combined in 2023. Woods Richardson and Varland as prospect depth, banging that drum throughout last year and now into the offseason. Zip sees it in a similar light, that those two are above Josh Winder on the pecking order. I don't know if that's actually how it is right now. Like If you look, if I got a look at the Twins depth chart on their whiteboard, they would probably have Winder above Varland and Woods Richardson, but I don't think that would last long if it is the case. And maybe it's not. Maybe they view Varland as more ready to be an everyday starter right now than Josh Winder. We're getting closer and closer. If Josh Winder has a couple of rough starts again or a month of rough starts at AAA or in the majors, you do have to start asking the question of, do we move him to the bullpen? Is this is it time to move him to the bullpen? That fastball is just not working. It's just not working here. It's just not working in St. Paul. Does he have to go to the bullpen? Although Winder was great for the Saints in 2021, the fastball crushed last year, crushed. So I, I have Varland and, and Simeon above Winder. I, I think Winder has better raw stuff 
than Simeon. I think Varlin is probably I would you could argue either way. Maybe Winder has better stuff because he has a truly very good slider and Varlin doesn't have any great off speed stuff. But Varlin's got a jumpy fastball. I think the fastball is gonna play. I would I would lean Varlin from a pure stuff standpoint, and I would lean Varlin certainly as having a better path to being an a, a starter on a major league team than Josh Winder at this point. Although I was bullish on Winder going into 2022, I learned new things. I watched him. I I saw how hitters reacted to his fastball. And it's absolutely possible that because Winder was hurt with his shoulder, his stuff played down. He got hit as a result. And when he's 95, 96, he's awesome. But when his shoulder's hurt and he's 93, 94, he's not the same guy. That's absolutely possible. I could be dead wrong, and I hope I am. At this point, I would have Varlin and Woods Richardson above him and zips agrees uh with that assessment interesting interesting stuff 80 win projection right now as we head into spring training a week from today pitchers and catchers are reporting there's not a lot the twins could do to really boost it but they remain in that range where any move they do make any addition they make any significant addition is going to boost their playoff odds more than it will a lot of other teams because they're in that middle range of teams the schedule is more balanced but Zips thinks the Twins are going to get two more wins than they did in 2022. I would take the over on 80. I think I would take the over on 80. I saw some sites have it like 78 and a half. I would absolutely bet that over. Other sites, FanDuel has it 84 and a half, I believe, for the Twins or 83 and a half. That's probably about right. I think they're in that 82 to 88 win range. Optimistically, I think they're in that range. Uh, I would be wouldn't be surprised if they won 90. I wouldn't be surprised if they won you know, 78 again in 2023. I'd be surprised if they won 70. I'd be surprised if they won 100. Uh, I guess that's the case for a lot of teams. But for this Twins team, 80 is probably on the lower end of where I would put them. I, I think today I would have them in that 82 to 88, depending on health and, and progression. I would put them in that range, which is bubble playoff team. And the moves you make at that point really matter. At Now at the deadline, in season, every win matters when you're in that 82 to 88 win range because 85 might get you in and 84, you're out. So everything matters there. And I think Cleveland's going to be good. I think the White Sox are going to be dangerous. And I think uh, Kansas City and Detroit, it's hard to get much worse. So the Twins, they have work the work cut out for them looking forward into 2023. And Zips thinks so, too. It's not horrible to have an 80-win projection. At least you're at 80. You have wiggle room. You're not coming from 73. You're not coming from 72. You know, you have room to make up there if you do start with an 80-win projection. But it's not ideal going into a season. Of course, the Twins could just shatter these projections and, and make it not matter. Thank you so much for making Locked on Twins your first listen. Every day, and I'll make your second listen. Locked on MLB prospects. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia. He's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Lindsey Crosby had an episode. I can't remember when. I posted it yesterday. He thinks Edward Julian is going to be better than Louisa Rice. Go listen to his take. Locked on MLB prospects. Thanks so much. Be chatting with Sully. Friday's episode. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much. Have a great day. And go Twins.